bats have been a big concern in some communities, but also to the native Hawaiian bird species. Now, Santaveras joins us live at the Hawaiian Humane Society with more on how we can all work together. Morning, Dallas. Good morning, Christiane Ross. Yes, this is such a tough topic, especially for animal lovers like myself when it comes to feral cats and, of course, the native Hawaiian bird species where dozens have been harmed because of this issue, which is why we're here at the Hawaiian Humane Society. And this is Thomas, who joins us here on Take Two. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning. Thanks for joining us here on Take Two. We Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank you so much. We also have Patty, too. Patty's been a little curious friend. She is available for adoption, by the way. She just got surgery, correct? Yeah, she yep. just got Spain. She's okay. two years old and she prefers to be the only cat in the household. Yeah, she doesn't get along with other cats, but she's so adorable. Say hi to the camera. Hi. She's so cute. <laughs> Sorry, I love I love cats. They're just live stuffed animals to me sometimes. But um as far as why we're here, you know, the feral cat community, it's been an ongoing problem. As much as we love cats, tell us what's important to know when it comes to that issue and the relationship with the Hawaiian Humane Society. Yeah, so free roaming cats, they, um, you know, it, it's not just it's not just the wild cats out there. It's also owned cats that are outside. So definitely being cognizant of that, of all free roaming cats in our community. And of course, we believe in, you know, trapping, neuter, spay, release, and managing the situation. So if you see a large community of cats, get in touch with your local TRNM group to help you spay, neuter, and reduce that overall cat population over time. It's the most effective and humane way to do so. And as far as anyone who brings in a cat, are there any requirements that you all will accept and not accept? Yeah, we're, if they're a socialized cat and they're super friendly, the first thing you want to do is check for that microchip. You can bring them here or you can bring them to your local veterinarian to check for that microchip and that microchip will tell us whether or not that cat's owned. If they're social and friendly or they're super young, it's kitten season right now and they're super young and they're out there, bring them on by and we can tell you what to do with them and you can even foster them yourself. If they're unsocialized and they're wild cats, they grew up in the wild and you know they don't do well in captivity they're not going to do well in a shelter environment. So it's best to just get them spayed and neutered and put them back into the community where they can live out the rest of their lives and not have any more litters. And how long is kitten season? Kitten season starts in early spring and it lasts all the way to the fall, peaking in late spring to midsummer. And this is the time of year that cats are having the most kittens. And you'll see a lot of, of cats out there, and most of the time they're not abandoned. They're being taken care of their mother. If that's the case and you see their mother around, just contact your local TRNM group or get in touch with us so we can help you decide whether or not to spay and neuter these, these animals so it helps the uh, population go down over time. And of course, if they're older kittens, you can bring them, um, bring them on by or you can even adopt them yourselves mm -hmm. and you know I see a lot of animal lovers and a lot of kupuna actually go out to these areas and feed these cats and I know they don't mean any harm because there could really be some depression kind of linked to that because they want some sort of attention but tell us how important is it to not feed the wild cats all the time yeah so we we think that as long as you are managing that population by spay neuter and releasing them back into the wild as long as that is happening and you're in touch with your local group and you're being responsible, um, that's the best way to reduce that population over time. Um, just feeding the cats without, without that kind of program is not something we recommend. Okay. Are there any thoughts when it comes to feral cats and the native flying bird species? Uh, we believe in the, you know, in the ethical treatment of all animals. So um, we believe that this TRNM population control is the best and most effective way to humanely reduce the cat population over time. And it'll kind of sort of create that domino effect. Absolutely. Over time. Well, very cool. And really quickly, I know we have to wrap up, but you all had a big event at Aloha Stadium when it comes to this. How did that go? It went well. We um, spayed and neutered over 1,300 cats. Wow. And we're absolutely proud of our team mm -hmm. and, you know, the people, our partners that we work with to make that event possible. Perfect. Well, we want to follow up with any more future events. Thank you so much, Thomas, for your time. Thank you. And thank you so much, Patty, for being a great extra. Remember, she's available for adoption, and she's just adorable. But until then, we're going to go ahead and send things back over to the studio. Reporting here from the Hawaiian Humane Society, Dallas and Averos, K22 News, working for Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> Maybe Dallas will go home with a new friend today, huh, Dallas? <laughs> yes, I think so. All right, thank you so much, Dallas, and thank you to the Hawaiian Humane Society. Coming up next, we're helping you 